Hey YouTube family, how we doing out there today? It's Iconic, and today I've got some Diablo Immortal patch notes for you guys. Let's check them out. So I skimmed through this one real quick earlier, and this one has some good, some bad, some ugly, a little bit of everything, but it's definitely a larger patch than what I thought it was going to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and check it out. This one's called Fight to the End and the Wild Brawl. So they're talking about the events that we got last time, and then this time they're bringing in the legendary gem drop pool, which they weren't able to fit in, I guess, with the Spiteful Blood gem last time. Um, is kind of what we were hearing on this one. Uh, maintenance begins August 9th from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, Pacific. And let's take a look here. We've got this event called the Wild Brawl. So this is the new PvP mode that we've been hearing about. Um, China got to test this one out, I guess, before us. It seems like maybe they were the test server for it, but now we're getting it. Um, this event will go from August 8th through the 23rd, and it seems like it's going to be a battle royale mode. So players start at level one and work together in teams of six to explore an expansive map and endure to become the last surviving team. Equip discovered gear, gain experience to strengthen your power, and slay everything in sight to win the battle. This arena style game mode ends when one team has survived all others to make their eternal mark on Sanctuary. Yeah, so definitely a battle royale mode. Um, multiple teams coming into the map, facing off against each other and trying to collect loot to upgrade as they go along. Your team will face off against up to four enemy teams in a winner takes all match. As the battle rages on, lethal darkness encroaches on Darkwood, forcing all players to fight on unstable footing until the final team emerges victorious. Um, so yeah, that darkness is gonna spread throughout just like all the other battle royales. Like you can't spread out the entire map the whole time. It's gonna start closing in on you. Adventurers, immortals, and shadows will be able to initiate the brawl by talking with Rotor, the Wild Brawl Emissary. Find him in the northeast of Westmarch at the Immortal Overlook Waypoint. And then uh, he'll tell you all the rules and everything. Um, this happens in Darkwood. It seemed like it was a new map, but yeah, looking at the screenshot here, that does look like Darkwood. Once a match has been secured, players will decide on which area bodes best for their hunt. Players can see their allies select a teleport spot to make a tactical decision as to where to enter the Darkwood. So pretty cool. Sounds like there's definitely going to be more team play and cooperation. So you probably want to come in with some people that you, you like to run with, um, whether that's in your clan or warband or friends that you have in the game. Like this will be fun to, to team up with people that you like. Set gear and normal gems equipped prior to the battle will not be available in battle but each player starts the match with legendary gear and gems equipped at reduced power. Hmm. So there is still maybe some pay to win aspect to it. I mean, maybe it's sort of like how um, the Conqueror PVP event was where, I mean, you got your gems and everybody was on the same level. I think every, all your gems went to level 10, but you didn't have your resonance. You didn't have um, all the gear levels and things on your gear. So, Maybe that's what's going on here. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see on that. And then it says, earn access to higher level gear by ranking up, ranking up your equipped gear through slaying monsters and other players or by finding treasure and looting defeated rivals for their legendary gear. After starting at level one, kill increasingly formidable hell spawn and enemy players to increase your player rank and the power of your equipped gear and gems. All right, so you're going to be killing monsters as well as other enemy players, um, and that's going to increase your power. You'll get drops from enemies. You'll probably get drops from monsters too as well. And then there'll be chests spread out all over the map where you can find better gear. Despite the rival player factions and legions of hellish minions to contend with, the darkness grows ever near. Failing to escape its grasp will slowly drain your life until you are no more. Emerge victorious or plot your revenge. The wild brawl ends when the last rival team has been fully vanquished or the last player of a rival team falls prey to the darkness. Fallen players can spectate the combat from afar or choose to leave the match to fight another day. And there'll be a leaderboard for it. Okay, interesting. So this one, I mean, it looks really dope to me. This is like the game mode we heard about a long time ago. And it seemed like it wasn't coming out, but we did end up getting this mode. 
Um, I can't wait to try it out. I think it's going to be really fun for teams. Um, it is really going to depend, though, what they do with these legendary gems. Because if you come in and there's something that doesn't make this a fair to play version of PvP, I don't see how anybody would want to play this um, except the whales or people that are kind of close to whale status or teaming up with whales. But yeah, hopefully they do this one right. We'll have to see. Uh, this was the big drop for this patch. So, I mean, I think this is a huge W. I didn't expect it to be coming up on the next patch. I thought it would be tested out in China for a little while longer. Um, so getting this on this patch, like I, I think this one is huge. Modify legendary gem drop table. So from August 9th to 23rd, players can enable a modified drop table for their legendary crests, which will allow them to choose 12 five-star legendary gems. When you receive a five-star legendary gem, it is guaranteed to be one of the gems you selected at up to a total of 300 Elder Rift attempts. When accessing the Elder Rifts, be precise in selecting five-star legendary gems you want to obtain. If you enter an Elder Rift without legendary gems selected, it will still count towards your limit of, of joining 300 Elder Rifts with the modified drop table. Um, and they're just kind of saying thank you for being patient because this was supposed to come out on the previous patch or the patch before that and everybody's been like hey where's the modified drop tables at uh so this one is honestly kind of stupid <laughs> what are there there's i think 15 legendary gems five star legendary gems in the game and you can select 12 of them like this isn't helping anyone it, you can always say it like objectively yes when you look at the facts 12 is better than 15 like yes okay yeah whatever but realistically like i need copies of blood soaked jade i need bottled hope i need gloom cask those are the ones i want to upgrade right now and um, what else do i have frozen heart like those are those are all my gems like i need to get to the next rank and getting copies of those gems from just running elder rifts is is wild i don't know how many rifts you got to run but really it's more about getting the platinum and then selling gems and trying to get your copies that way yeah, uh, yeah, I gotta say this this one is is pretty stupid. And then the fact that I mean, 300 rift attempts is a, a lot of rift attempts. But if you don't select anything or you don't run any gems or whatever, it still takes away from your 300 rift attempt total. Like, who cares? Yeah, come on, come on, Blizzard, do better, do better. We need ways to get the dupes that we need, man. PC version leaving open beta. So this has been what a year over a year in the making like what are we a year two three months in this needed to happen a while ago I'm excited to see hopefully this means like my PC version of my game runs trash compared to my iPad um, I mainly play the game actually on my iPad I would say the majority of the time and like my PC takes forever to load you get random crashes all the time um, there's weird stuttering and hiccuping like I mean I hope they fix some of these these bugs on the PC version so what do they have to say about it to celebrate the PC version of Diablo Immortal leaving open beta we are releasing surrogates mine bundle available exclusively on the PC version of Diablo Immortal from August 9th to 23rd and limited to one per account you get 300 eternal orbs two legendary crests three rare crests ten aspirin keys so nice just a little little gift you know i'll take i'll take some freebies um it seems like there's more of a breakdown as to what they're fixing uh we're, we'll circle back to that and if it's not too extensive we'll read that on this as well we've got our events all clans on deck um y'all know what that is by now but that's coming back always good to have more events i'll never say hey don't give me more events even though sometimes they're a little lackluster the more events the better the more free crest the more set pieces the more legendaries the more telluric pearls like all of that so always good for that and this one i don't think we've had before shields of the hearth but i'm sure it's basically the same thing as you complete daily shields of hearth tasks you'll receive various rewards for your heroics so yeah this is this is going to be the same thing just do some daily tasks maybe it's in the frozen um frozen tundra we'll have to see but that that's kind of what it sounds like to me feature updates heliquary bosses kill assist new rewards 
For players that have already vanquished the active Heliquary boss, new rewards are available on sending them back to the gates of hell a second time. When you assist a player in vanquishing the active Heliquary gauntlet boss, you will receive additional rewards to the typical reward pool. Okay, so you get rewarded for, for helping people out, you know, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you probably help people out a lot, so you should get some sort of rewards for it. It almost makes you not want to help people out sometimes, like I'm doing this for absolutely nothing. So good positive change there. Class change cooldown. Thanks to overwhelming player feedback during the Crimson Plane event, we are permanently reducing the class change cooldown from 7 days to 24 hours. We are permanently reducing the class change cooldown from 7 days to 24 hours. You know, me being a class change junkie, I, I love this, but at the same time, I mean... It does seem like this could be potentially abused for things like swapping classes right before the right a day before. You know, sometimes I wouldn't change class because I really didn't feel like being stuck a week. But for like, say like Barb, like I have an alt Barb, so I haven't wanted to start over on Barb again on my main and get all the essences and everything. But if I could do it, you know, during the weekend when I know I'm going to grind or something and, you know, get some legendary swap back. Or when something, you know, not important is going on. I don't have to worry about tower battles or right or anything like that. Um, I'll probably fill out all the classes now because I need to. I need to keep going for Crusader and I need to start on Barb. So I I mean, I, I'll have to see it in practice here, but I think it's a good change. Again, anybody who knows me knows me in the game. I'm always running around in a different class. Being stuck on Blood Knight this long actually has been bugging me. So. Maybe I might swap for a couple of days, come back to Blood Knight, finish it off. We'll, we'll have to see. Notification Center improvements. We've made the following improvements to Notification Center in game. Notifications are now categorized under category headers. Notification or Navigational notifications now have navigation icons instead of the previous bullet point icon. Notifications for activities from the activities calendar can be toggled for in-game notifications. I don't think anybody asked for that, but hey quality of life stuff I, if as long as it's not a detriment or causing anything to act wonky or introducing bugs like i'm all for quality of life stuff deeds of valor updates we're adding two additional deeds of valor badge ranks to allow more players to imbue the power found in kion's chosen and akiba's chosen badges the badges will still be similar to the clan leader badges but with different requirements to obtain these badges, players must have a perfect rating for both impact and loyalty, requires a score of 90 or above. Players can increase their impact rating the longer they are immortal or in the shadow faction and by participating in the Rite of Exile, and can improve their loyalty rating by remaining as part of their faction for over 90% of the reign. Players still only need an exceptional rank for activity and participation. Wow. So this is a crazy change. Um, I know... I felt some type of way about not being able to get the 12% badge and even like for a while debated like, man, is it worth it to just go dip and do my own clan for a bit and then, you know, hop back to my clan later so I can get that 12% badge. Um, I, oh, I'm in a position in my clan where I, you know, I can play. Um, I'm not crazy powerful by any means, but. I'm, I'm able to participate in the right in my clan. So this is something that I will be able to get. I man, it's just more exclusion for other players, though. I, yeah, this one, I don't think is going to sit well with the player base. We'll we'll have to see what you guys think about it. Obviously, let me know. I I mean, I like the chance, obviously, that more people can get it. But you're really still only rewarding the highest paying players in a clan character stat screen updates the character profile in the ui will now update to accurately accurately reflect your stats when playing in battlegrounds or other areas of the game where the strife debuff is active this should provide better clarity on the true measure of your power when engaging with your most fearsome adversaries in pvp content note that when viewing items themselves your stats will remain unchanged but your overall character stats will be accurate for the pvp mode you are engaging in this UI update does not change any functionality to the strife debuff or to the scaling of any items in the game that weren't previously active. So that that explanation I don't I don't
quite get what they're saying here. I mean, it seems like I'm, I'm not positive, actually. <laughs> uh, we're yeah, we're going to have to see this in game and see what what it's actually talking about. Um, if anyone has any ideas or know what, what they mean by this, um, let me know down in the comments below. Definitely to appreciate it. Immortals rewards increase. Becoming an immortal is one of the highest honors one can attain in Sanctuary. We've heard your feedback that the access to power and rewards did not live up to the determination needed to become an immortal. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that. We're immortals right now and it's been a while since I've been one. And I gotta say, man, you have to do so much stuff as an immortal. Like, it's it's a little bit ridiculous. And then what you have to do to become an immortal in the first place, I, I think the rewards definitely need to be better. Um, so let's see, how are they beefing this up? At Bronze 1, the legendary crest available from Lieutenant Fizria is now available weekly, formerly available monthly. Oh, okay. That does not solve the rewards issue on the immortal side whatsoever. It's a step in the right direction. Hey, I appreciate y'all trying. It says stay tuned for more overhauls like these in the future. I mean, you can always say objectively, you're getting more crests. Like, yes, you're getting more crests, but at the end of the day, immortals should be getting more crests and more hilts and more loot. And I mean, all, all those things. I honestly, most of the time, I've, now that I've had this experience twice, I prefer being a shadow. I mean, I it's easier. You still get your loot. You still get your keys. Like they definitely, immortals need to be buffed more than this it's a step in the right direction for sure but let's see what else they they bring they bring to it cosmetic menu updates the cosmetic rarity menu will now include an option to view cosmetics that are unavailable to your current class helping players to see their previously earned purchased cosmetics while playing on a class that cannot use their illustrious glory what are they, rubbing that in your face that you don't have that cosmetic on that class like okay Starfire Shard description updated. A Starfire Shard gem description has been updated to now include the knockback effect, which was present on the gem but previously missing from the description. The gem functionality remains the same. Rain meteorites on your unsuspecting foes beneath and dance in the Calamity Unleash. So, yeah, we never saw this present in the description of the gem, but everyone's noticed that the Starfire Shard definitely has a knockback effect to it. So, apparently that was intended. I think that gym is already OP, so I mean, they just made it official that that's how that gym is supposed to work. Iron Bane Legendary Gym PvP update. The Iron Bane Legendary Gym was unexpectedly affected by the Strife debuff in PvP. Okay, I don't know if anyone cares about this one. I don't. I haven't seen anybody using it, but up to 16% for rank 10 um, for enemy movement speed reduction should be the same across all game modes for this gym, it says. And then hiding helmets update. The ability to hide your helmet is now available on the following gear sets. Crystalline Echo, Sacred Wilds, Children of Lilith, Bronze Warden, Children of Anarius. Hey, more things that you can hide your helmet on I think is awesome. A lot of these cosmetics, I don't know well, who's designing these helmets or why they're going so over the top with it. But they're definitely going over the top. So I appreciate the fact that more cosmetics you can hide the helmet on. That's definitely good. Um, I won't go into the PC specific bug fixes on this one. Um, I know I've already gotten a little bit long on this. This definitely was a lot more information than I was expecting would be in this patch. And we have we have some good information, some bad information, some okay information. But overall, I do think this new PvP mode is going to be interesting. Um, we're beefing up the Immortals a little bit little bit better drop rate for the legendary gems that you want we've got some events coming back so yeah all in all i think it's a pretty solid patch especially for all the stuff that we just got for the blood knight update um for the anniversary i, I again i didn't expect there to be another significant patch for a little bit and even though i don't think this is labeled a major patch that should be only once a quarter um, this kind of has the feeling of of almost a major patch to it so I think they did a good job in terms of like the content they're bringing us. I wish this PvP event as always was not limited. I don't know why these have to be limited events all the time, but we'll check it out. We'll be bringing it to you guys once it's live. Any questions, any comments, leave them down below for me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the support. 
Y'all know what to do. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.